Hey guys, so we went through a strong New Jersey cold front just last night and I want to check on the reptiles. It got down pretty cold. It was like 10 degrees last night. We're eating some dino nuggies back there. Only with ketchup though. We only have them with ketchup. Right mommy? Yeah, unfortunately. So let's go ahead and let's check on them. I almost fell down the stairs and hopefully they're all right. It's some bad temperatures down here. I mean, let's go look at this enclosure. How's it going? You know, it's the beginning of a new year. Probably completely bald. Yellow Aki. Now, before going around to each of these enclosures, I just want to say that I knew this cold front was coming. It's not like I was ill prepared. I set up a lot of these guys knowing that these temperatures could get down really low. I mean, if you want to look over here, let's look at my garage door. A while ago, I put in some insulation around the different crevices here, knowing that winter was coming. And, you know, that's helped, but this garage is just not as insulated as I thought it was gonna be. I kept the lights on all night last night, and there you can see it's 63. So 63 right there. Dell over here, 63 as well. And it is early afternoon, late morning right now. So this probably rose a little bit in temperature from the nighttime. So it probably got down a little bit lower than that, maybe into the high 50s. Anyway, the reptiles I worry about the most in these kind of situations are the young ones, the babies. And we got an Aces Dell clutch right here that hatched a couple weeks ago. These guys have set up really well with a heat emitter and kept their light on, the one right here that this guy's basking under. All night, they're running around being crazy, not worried about them, so that's a really good sign. I'm mostly concerned with having cold stun reptiles, really badly cold stun reptiles that I need to move out into the heat. This is LG here. LG luckily stayed a little under the basking bowl. He's the temperature you guys saw in the beginning of this video before the intro. He is, he's a little cold, but very, not that bad, not that bad. Good on him for staying near the basking site. So he's moving around. He, he's not cold stunned. That's really good news. So going to leave him there. Of course, he immediately jumps off the basking site. But these guys know where the warmth is. If they're really struggling, they'll move near it. And I think this kind of adds a little bit of knowledge to Aki keeping that they can go pretty low. And, you know, I talked about in the last video that... These guys, they're very hardy and they can stand a wide range of temperatures and that we could be having, you know, their max temperatures, the 160s, much more than they really need. And I remember someone commented on the last video about living in Australia and how they go down to, I think, in there, they said they've seen Aki's running around in the high 60s and mid 60s. And I think this adds just, you know, more knowledge to that being a parent and them being okay in that. But you can't see he's a little slow. Okay, so LG's okay. We got Tortellini out here, who is much more susceptible to the temperature of the room, not being in a enclosed enclosure. He's in this 300 gallon stock tank that I have in the middle of the room. But he had his basking site all last night set on 100. It's actually a little bit over. I kind of like it that way, just because temperature fluctuates. So a little bit higher than 100 during the day, but when it gets kind of nighttime, a little bit colder, it sits at that high 90s, 100 mark. But Tortellini, being a Russian tortoise, I mean, they brumate in pretty cold temperatures. He's not brumating right now, he's still out and about, but I would say that he's well equipped for low temperatures, being temperatures in like the 60s and even 50s. So I'm not too worried about Tortellini. Obviously he's probably a little slow too, walking around, but he's good. I do have quite a bit of reptiles that are well equipped for lower temperatures like Tortellini. I mean, Frappuccino over there, I'll, I'll check in on them because I know you guys love seeing them, but Frapp would do fine in these temperatures. Again, they brumate in lower temperatures like in the 50s and 60s. I don't really think he's having too much of an issue. And then over there, the Aussie Water Dragons in this very apparently dark corner in the grow tent, their winter enclosure, they can tolerate much lower. I left them outside in the fall as low as I think the low 50s, maybe even into very humid in there apparently, maybe into the high 40s. So those guys are good. They're probably in their little pile of leaves there, which act as their hide. So I'm not really gonna check on them. I mean, I'll check on them. I don't know. I don't think it'll be a part of the video, but we'll see. The main guys I'm worried about are the Ackies over here, especially the females, because I think both of them are a little gravid. So I have to find Dell, but let's go check in on Dell. Let's see how she's doing. These got pretty cold as well, but hopefully they stayed closer to the basking area. Okay, so did a little digging. Dell is actually burrowed right now, so I'm not gonna go 
digging her up. It's actually a really nicely formed burrow. Hopefully you can see it right here. I can't really see what I'm showing on camera. But I don't want to dig her up for various reasons. The main one being, like I said, she's gravid, she has eggs, she's burrowed. I don't want to disturb that process. Plus there's probably some heat held down there. I think she's fine. I'm not really worried about that. I'm just gonna leave her alone. Let's check in on the Hendragaki, see if they're out. I'll see how they're reacting to this and that will also give me indication of probably how Dell is anyway. So BDA is in his log. This is where he always is. You guys saw that in a video before. I also have a little helper behind me checking out his favorite reptile. Is that your favorite reptile in there? Where's Tort? Where's that? Who's that? Is that Tort? Say hi, Tort. Say hi. Hi. Yeah, hi. <laughs> All right, so BDA. In his log, this is where he typically is. Let's see if I could kind of coax him out. I'll, I get a little worried about reaching in there sometimes because sometimes he goes after whatever touches him, if you get what I mean, before uh, seeing what it is. But uh, he's let me kind of grab him before. So let's see what, how he reacts. Okay, come here, BDA. Yeah, I know, it's just me though. You're a little cold. You're a little cold. Let's get you under the basking lamp. I know this is your log and you enjoy this log. It's really hard getting them out of places like this because their nails really hold into stuff, especially their tails. Yeah, he's he's kind of cold. Livia, touch him. Tell me what you feel. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> I believe you. So shedding too, which is good. But this is his log. He always goes there. Like I said, guys, I mean, he is a little cold to the touch. He's probably going to be a little slow but they know where the heat is. If he really needed heat, he would go over to the basking area and reside under there. I'm gonna put him under there anyway, just because I want him to warm up out of concern. But first of all, acknowledge how nice it is to hold BDA now. He used to really be anti being held. <laughs> and BDA, even the female who is actually Burrow too, uh, even you know BDA is really relaxed with that now. So I'm gonna put BDA under the basking spot. Okay, so I put BDA on the basking spot, like I said female in there is burrowed underneath. She is also potentially gravid, so I don't want to mess with that. But at the same time, look who has come in, coming out, who has came out while we were looking at the Ackies. We have Frappuccino right here. Like I said, doing fine. Probably heard all the commotion. Let's open this up. Hey, Fraps, say hi to your fans. So Fraps doing good. Let's see if Fraps a little cold. A little bit, but actually really not that bad. Luckily, his hide is right underneath three basking bulbs that gets us up to almost about 130 probably on a on a warmer winter day so probably pretty good in here I just kind of mixed up the substrate recently to kind of aerate it a little bit but perhaps he has no problem with this tegus really don't have problem with a little bit cooler temperatures obviously you don't want it to get to like freezing or anything but this is not something he's not suited for occasionally don't make this their whole life but you get what I'm saying Say hi, Frap. Can you say hi? John, say hi, Frap. Hi, Frap. Say hi, Frap. No. No? You don't want to say hi to Frap? No. Oh, you don't want to perform on camera? Can you say bye-bye? Bye-bye. <laughs> I gotta say guys, this turned out a lot better than I thought it was gonna be. I didn't expect any major problems, to be honest, but I did think we would have some pretty cold sun reptiles. I just really think this says a lot about reptiles and I just love learning things about them every day and how much they can really handle and I, I don't know, it's just pretty amazing in my mind. I did check in off camera on the water dragons. And by checking in, they're not here. So really not checking in. I don't know how to really phrase all that. You guys know I'm not great with words, but they are most definitely both burrowed in their little hide corner there under all that brush. This is how they like to hide Aussie water dragons. And this is really good news. I've been really lowering their basking temp over time because I really want them to focus on brew mating. So I've been really trying to get it to the temperature level that it was in the fall when they were trying to brew mate in their outdoor enclosure, which really was the mid fifties. The basking temp here is a little bit higher. It's like 63 ish, 65 maybe. So I might even hire this. So if I hire this, I have this on a little pulling mechanism so I can pull it up a little bit more, although there's not much room there. So I lower that basking temp a little bit more. 
But it's good news that these guys are both in their hide there because that means they could be potentially trying to brewmate and I really want that. So some good news from the Aussie Water Dragons here. Most of you guys know me for my Aki Monitor care and Aki Monitor breeding. That's the only reptile I've bred thus far. And I breed out of passion. Not that there's anything wrong with just breeding whatever you want and breeding a bunch of different species, but I like to breed species that I'm very passionate about and interested in. And that's why the Aussies are my second ever breeding project. I hope you guys caught on to that by now, having a male and a female. It's because there's not a lot of knowledge and a lot of success breeding them in places that they cannot be outdoors year round. So in warmer places like Florida and Australia, places like that. I really want to learn how to successfully breed them somewhat indoors or in a place where you need to kind of bring them in for a period of time. That is why they have an outdoor enclosure because it does mean a lot to them to be outdoors. But this is a really cool experiment almost and just something I feel like I can add to the community and something that really interests me. So that's going to be really fun and it's going to be a lot of tweaking and learning. So excited for that adventure. Also guys, I gotta say they have quickly become my second favorite reptile species to work with. They are just so interesting and fun to interact with. They're not quite as popular in the US compared to probably all the rest of the species I have. And maybe I just enjoy them so much because they're definitely different than the species I already keep being semi-aquatic and such. But they're just really personable. That's why I like the Aki so much. They're fun to interact with, even though not a lot of them enjoy interacting with you, let's say. I love watching them run around and get into their antics. It's just super fun. And I think that there needs to be more of the species maybe in the U.S. for people to keep and work with. They're not quite as popular, not quite as well known. They're starting to slowly gain in popularity. But yeah, I really just think this is a great species and I want to help kind of bring that into the hobby a little bit more. All right, guys, so the temperatures are slowly rising in here a little bit more. It's up to 66 on the low end in there. That glare is really messing things up for me, 66 over in Dell. You're just going to probably have to take my word for it. What I'm ultimately going to be doing, I do have one heater in here right here that can be left on 24-7. It's designed to do so. I've used this for years now. I used this back in Virginia. But I'm going to have to put in a dedicated line connected to my box over here just for these heaters because they take up so much power and putting a second one in here just blows the entire garage. So I'm going to have to do that. Get a little bit more heat in here. That's probably the best solution I have. So I'll be getting an electrician out to do that. Ultimately, I'm probably gonna have to do a little bit more work here. I'm probably gonna try to put in a big overhead heater in there. And then eventually, hopefully out in the back, I'll be able to build my own building and have it set up properly. Of course, guys, I'm open to any recommendations you have to heat up the garage a little bit during this cold, cold month of January. I'd really appreciate any suggestions, but I think we're gonna be fine. And if we get through this winter, this probably will not happen again. And I think it's just cool. I wanted to really make this video because it's cool to see how much reptiles can kind of handle and deal with specifically in a temporary state. You don't want this to be a consistent thing, but the Ackies, they especially, they just have such a range of being able to work with different, I don't know, environments. It's just really exciting to me. So I wanted to share this with you guys, but that's all I got for today. So I hope you enjoyed, hopefully post some shorts this week. See you guys in the next video. Bye guys.